So morning, James. Thanks very much for joining us today to share your personal story with us. Morning, Louise. Thanks for having me. So would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you're going to talk to us about today? Yeah, sure. So so I'm, I'm James Mullins. I'm the Assistant Director of Patient Safety uh, for the organisation, which means I'm the, the Trust Patient Safety Specialist. And I also um, lead on the patient experience element and, and also infection prevention and control as well. Um, but we're here today to talk about Track and Trace, the NHF track and trace team that was set up uh, in response to NHS test and trace um, which was set up as a response to the wider the COVID pandemic. And that must have been quite a busy and hard thing for you to to set up and to get into so quickly so can you tell us a little bit about how you did it? Yeah sure yeah well it was I mean it was very difficult it was one of those like most things that happened in this sort of eye of the storm of the pandemic, it was, you didn't really get much warning. It was a case of um, you got a letter through from NHS England going to, you know, Angela, our chief exec, saying we want this done and this is what organisations need to do to respond to it. It needs to be done by yesterday. And that's how it was. We were, I think we were given a few days to mobilise something uh, to respond to test and trace. And the theory being that if the test and trace team, national team, would be um, tracing people basically who've been in contact with those who have tested positive for COVID-19. So the theory being that all, all organisations, NHS trusts, would create their own internal, if you like, and that they would do their own internal sort of tracking, if you like, of people, staff, patients who've come into contact with somebody um, who who has tested positive? Who's a known tested positive uh, for COVID nineteen? So it it was it was quite tricky from that point of view. But um, I do love a challenge. So we we got to it straight away, and we um, I, I gathered um, I got some help from particularly uh, um, someone that had worked really closely with me on PPE throughout the pandemic as well, Tom. Tom Streeter, who works in the sexual health service. Um, Tom's a project manager and very great with IT as well. So we put together some standard operating procedures for what it could look like. And that was a, that was probably the most difficult thing because there was no guidance in terms of what the expectation was, what it should look like, any reporting, anything like that. Because we knew we would have to do a reporting at a national level. But we didn't know what it would look like, so we had to kind of make it up as we went along. But um, as we always do here at NHFT, we we made sure it was you know very robust and it was user friendly, but it was also simple to use as well. We don't want to overcomplicate anything. So we, we that was the you know the first part of getting all the sort of guidance and the, all that sort of stuff in place. But I had to get a team. I had to get a team of people to do this as well because we needed to cover it seven days a week nine till five um so we um we we, we kind of used a oh, innovative model i'm not sure if you call it that but certainly thought outside the box slightly um because there was no money to do this of course no extra money so we used um we, we not, not used we gathered support from hr and people who were shielding at the time shielding at home people who weren't off work because they were, you know, particularly unwell, uh, just because they couldn't be in work because of the vulnerabilities they may have had because of certain long term conditions and things like that. So, but we're desperate to do something, desperate to help. And um, so when we put out the call from HR for those in the shielding list of anybody who would like to be involved in this, we were inundated. And I needed probably four people to be able to do it. We didn't want loads and loads. We needed a small team but enough of a team that if, you know, people went off sick or and can have time off as well. And we narrowed it down to four staff. Um, and I was very, very fortunate to get some great staff. So I got Sue Roberts, who worked as a, the lead RGN at Yarl's Wood. I got Sam Butler. Um, Sam worked in the high-risk um, diabetic foot service. Julie Waring who worked in Hazelwood at the time, and also Felicia Akimbose, 
who worked, uh, I think it was Harbour or Bay Ward, one of the wards at Berrywood. And we basically, it was the blind leading the blind because none of us had done this before or anything like it. But because, as I said, Tom was helping me from the sexual health service, um, I kind of looked at what they did because they do this kind of thing all the time in sexual health um, for things like sexually transmitted diseases, do a bit of contact tracing and things. So we didn't want to throw out the baby with the bath water. So we just basically had to look at how they did things. And we used that as a basis of our starting point uh, as in training for the team. So I got the guys together and we had a, a whole afternoon of training where we looked through what the ask was, kept it nice and simple. And we basically talked about what it is we want from this or what you would want if you were on the end of the phone being told that you've got to self isolate because you've been in contact with someone. And at the time, of course, everybody was extremely nervous and anxious. So we equated it to the same way that you would do if you were calling somebody, you know, any family member up to give them some, you know, potentially bad news. Um, so customer service was the, the the bottom line. You know, that was the most that was the fundamental skill that I wanted the team to have was that ability to to contact people to be uh, empathetic and to put themselves in their shoes. And they did that, they, they did that extremely well. So we did a lot of training <laughs> and we did it on a team's call and we practiced on each other. You know, we, we gave we gave three or four different scenarios, different services, you know, if you're a parent or if you're, um, you know, a member of staff, whatever. Um, so we did some different scenarios and went through, you know, and we all we kind of graded each other almost about how we would like that person to call us. Um, and it worked extremely well and the guys were great right from day one I mean, right from day one they were fantastic and the team um has evolved slightly because of different reasons mainly because you know with services coming back on line and uh, restarting um and people then maybe not needing to be on the shielding list anymore we haven't go back to their original role um we were you know we had to sort of then go back to hr and see if there's anybody else that was available to join us um, so the team has sort of fluctuated uh, in terms of, you know, people helping us out uh, over the last few months. But um, the, the theory and the ethos the whole, behind the whole thing remains the same. Um, we've got some very good people involved, uh, even at the moment, um, with, you know, Tracy, Tracy Adcock, who helps out. Uh, again, someone who, you know, comes from the diabetic high risk food service. So again, very used to talking to people on the phone. Um, very used to be in that soothing voice on the end of the phone, and just talking to people. Um, so yeah, the, 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 the guys of are, are absolute stars in my eyes. They're they've absolutely helped to keep NHFT safe, and their whole approach to it, their dedication to it. Um, I never have to ask for anybody to help out. I never have to, you know, they sort it between themselves. It's one of them you know, maybe has to go into work, can't do a shift for the track and trace team that day, the other, that someone else will volunteer and they'll just do it between them. Um, so I'm very, very lucky from that point of view that I've got such a dedicated bunch. What I haven't mentioned is some of the other stuff in behind it um, that's helped us to really track everything in a really um, robust way, and that's the IT side of it. So what Tom and I worked on very hard with the our digital technology service colleagues was to create almost an assessment form that you would use when you call up a member of staff to ask them about their contact with someone else. And we kept it very, very straightforward and simple. And um, there's four or five very straightforward questions that we ask people um, in terms of, you know, that they've come into contact with someone and it, it revolves around things like PPE, is the right PPE being worn, etc. And we um, we input it into the into the system, which is based on Teams. Um, and then what happens is when all the information is inputted, it then gets translated into a database. So we can at any one time break it down by services, um, wards, departments, people, in terms of those that are self isolating, where they come from, where they work, 
how long they're self isolating for, why they're self isolating, um, and then we can get the the sort of live data, but it tells us across a you know periods of time as well. So any reporting that we would need to do, uh, we can do it in the click of a few buttons. It tells us a lot of information in a really simple and easy format. Um, and, and that's been, you know, fantastic piece of work, um, really supported by our digital technology colleagues and any changes we've had to make to the forms, to the database. Um, our, our, as I said, the digital technology team have been so responsive and helping us just like that with everything else throughout the whole pandemic. But the guys, um, I think all those things are really important and they've been really great in terms of process and systems, but it's the people, as I said, that have made it really put the meat on the bones and made it work. Um, so I've talked about the guys and the, you know that how, how they work as a team. What I haven't mentioned is that they also meet um, on a daily basis. They have a daily huddle. Um, and we only they only do it if there's been something calls came in that day about anybody they need to talk about. And the whole point of it was set up. Uh, the daily huddle was that so we could learn and learn with alongside each other. And so if someone was on that day and got a call um, and they need to talk about it and we talk about it so we can learn from each other, what would we have done differently? Um, and, and almost just a sort of a checkpoint really for us all. Um, I, you know, I, as as my job got much and much more busier, I, I wasn't always able to make the huddles. In fact, I haven't for a number of months now. Um, but I don't really have to because, to be honest, they don't they don't need me. The guys lead it so well themselves, um, and they take they take responsibility. Uh, we've got our own mailbox and all that set up, of course, for all this. So I'm I'm able to track what's going on if I need to, but I don't really need to. They do their own rotas. Um, they sort everything out themselves, they do their huddles, they support each other, they come to me if they need me, if there's anything sticky, um, and I make sure I'm extremely responsive to them, um, that I respond as soon as possible, and if I need to join any calls, I do, because that's important. Um, but it really is about them, and I go back to my the point I made earlier about how, how safe they have kept the organisation. Uh, they've been a huge part of that, just like lots, you know, lots of other people uh, have in different, in their own different ways. They're, you know, they're a small part of a huge success story for the trust, which has been the, um, the response to COVID and how dedicated everybody has been. And they've been a massive part of that, massive part of that. And I can imagine from a personal level, there was probably days where all of you struggled a little bit. It was probably quite a hard um, thing for you to be pulled away from your normal job to to start this team. It must have been really busy. There must have been some really difficult conversations that you had to have with with other people. You need to tell them that they had to isolate. Mm -hmm. How did working together as a team help you with that? Were you able to kind of lean on each other when you were having a bad day and, and support each other in that way as well? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, that's why the huddles were put in place, really, so that you had that constant sort of um, knowing that that support was there. Um, but not only that, you know, like I said, I always made sure that although they were leading it, I, I've always made sure that I'm, they know I'm there. You know, I, I touch base with them every few weeks, just send an email to them all, just asking how everybody is and make sure everyone's all right. Um, they're very communicative, if that's a word, communicative. Um, they communicate with me all the time. And, you know, if there's anything going on or um, they think in the next few weeks they're maybe going to have to go back to their normal job or something like that, you know, we sort something out and that's absolutely fine. Um, but, yeah, it has been. It, it's, I mean, I, I think I'm quite surprised, actually, because I thought it would be more difficult than it has been in terms of people's reaction to it, being told to self-isolate. Um, we've had, to be honest with you, very minimal issues in terms of, you know, people being concerned or really anxious. Most of the time, I think people have found it quite reassuring, the the conversations with the Track and Trace team. Um, so, yeah, it, it has been, it, it could have been probably more difficult than it has, but again, that's down to the skills of those involved. They've been, they, I don't think they even realise how much a big impact they've made. 
Um, I don't think they realise how important they've been. So yeah, I'm 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 delighted that we're able to have this conversation and showcase them in this way because um, I, I'm I'm immensely proud of all of them. That's brilliant. So part part of you, I suppose, as much as everybody wants things to get back to normal, will part of you miss the track and trace team when it's gone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will I will. I'll miss a lot of the things about this weird, some of the things, but you know, the PPE store and obviously track and trace and different things, some of the stuff, other things we've set up. Um, yeah, the, 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 I, and, I, and I think as much as they've been great working together, I think they've probably learned a ton about themselves and their own um, capabilities as well. And that, you know, being part of something that's, that was set up so rapidly and we've just done it in such a, um functional kind of way I'm, I'm i'm a bit you know when it comes to making sure we do things right and we follow policy and all that sort of stuff and um, but that we put something in place that people can use and really you know it benefits them and it's user friendly um so they will have learned a ton from being part of that as well um but yeah absolutely i'll i'll i'll, I'll miss them when i'm no longer we're no longer doing this whenever that may be Brilliant. Thank you. That sounds like you've had ups and downs and just an amazing journey. So thank you for sharing your story with us. Okay, um, any last final words that you want to say or? No, no, no. I think I think I've probably said it um, in terms of just how proud I am of the guys and their dedication. For something they didn't have to do has been phenomenal. Um, like I said, I've never had to go chasing people to do it or anything like that. It's been um, so such a pleasure to work with them all, and they um, they're all, to be honest with you, they're all potentially great leaders themselves. They just need to um, hopefully realise it. But I'm hoping this experience will help them realise just how important they've been. So yeah, great stuff from them. Thanks, James, and thank you to you and your team for keeping everybody safe. Thanks, Louise.